Oh, woo, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you have a hairball. Probably best not to talk about that right now. Anyway, I'm Lydic. I'm Tom. <laughs> and I have to use the bathroom. I'll be right back. God damn it! <laughs> <sighs> you you realize he was waiting for that, right? He probably was. <laughs> every every time, you know, I'm just gonna pour myself a cup of coffee. Hmm. Lydic added a new bot to the Discord chat called Necobot, and oh, that actually. Oh yeah, just good. out the weirdness <laughs> right now. <laughs> well, I mean, are you uh, ashamed of it? <laughs> Last week, I make a joke directly referring to Zane as a weed, and then the next day, I'm searching bots on Discord. It's like, hmm, Necobot. <laughs> mm. uh, <laughs> uh. Yeah, reminds me of the joke that was probably cut off with the recording from last time. That's the one thing I do remember is the Yoda joke we tried to do. Did we try to do a Yoda joke? <laughs> yep. Ah. Uh. <laughs> I, I remember that because I think I made my head hurt just doing that. And then it's like, oh, Craig is gone now. So <laughs> why the <laughs> <laughs> 3%? <laughs> you... <laughs> and of course, That's it's compatibility that there was between Dad, Bot, and Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Mic on, mic off. God damn. Wax Mike on, like wax off. Mm. Like anyway. On. <sighs> anyway, we're reading Atlanta Nights still. We're on chapter 16. I'm just going to start this bullshit. Yep, let's do it. Chapter 16. Ivani felt a thrill as she was finally able to leave the expanse that was I. I yeah, 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 85, and into the four-lane road that is 316, the Atlanta Highway. She unconsciously began singing the B-52's Love Shack to herself. She reflected joyously that, uh, that she had passed the CNN Center, Fulton County Stadium, and other relics of the days when Ted Turner seemed to run a country, instead of trying to give all of his money away to places such as the United Nations. It isn't, she thought, that everything in Atlanta is named after, after Peach is named Peachtree something shit. Only bad novelists believe that. <laughs> oh no, the novel's becoming self-aware. <laughs> if memory serves, a lot of the characters are actually named after peach trees, as a joke. <laughs> yeah. So much as the city was moved beyond peach trees, fuck. That thought shifted the soundtrack in her mind to Aerosmith. Cool. So is it? Yes, it's a, a new, new paragraph. paragraph it's just not indented. Okay. I'm not a rag doll myself. She reaffirmed to herself. Her thoughts move moving to Rory Edwards. Richard Isaacs had been a pleasant fling. It had, after all, lasted one night more than she had expected. She had ultimately, that second night, decided that even his skill at selecting clothes that made him look five years younger was not enough. <laughs> it would not compensate for the fact that his life was spent playing games and that he would play her for as long as he wanted. Her friend Sue Young had once told her, every once in a while, you just have to bend over and take it. Sue had casually continued being explicit about where, and Yavani had been appropriately offended. She also realized her friend would never understand that sex was about power, not love. Putting yourself into such a position would forever reduce your role in the relationship until you both started hating you for doing it. I'd rather what not the relationship like? be about power. That's really concerning. That's, That's not healthy. Rape. That's ugh. that's abusive. That's like abusive, like relationships. Okay, like of of the way the Unless people it's are a in subdom this. relationship. That's not the case. And if <laughs> that is the case, and it's not a subdom relationship, you're stuck in the middle of an abusive one, and you should probably get the fuck out. Considering everyone in this book, are you honestly surprised? <laughs> yes, I thought they just liked having sex, not because it made them feel powerful. Yeah, there's no problem with just lap liking to have sex. Well, they're all terrible people, so they're going to turn something that could usually be fun into something terrible, so I'm well, not surprised. Yeah, but media has a habit <laughs> of trying to shame people for just wanting to have sex in the first place anyway, so... Yeah. 
Well, yes, but like... I mean, after all, this is the U.S., the land in which most people only learn about how to have sex through porn, which is highly inaccurate. Does nobody take sex ed? <laughs> Are you Does nobody talk to me? their parents? U.S. sex... <laughs> U.S. Point. sex ed is a goddamn shit show, and most of the time, people feel too uncomfortable talking to their parents about that shit. I just straight up my ass... I asked my parents with my grandmother in the car how babies are made. I was sitting in the back of the car with my sister, and we had a long discussion with each other. We were just like, all right, our parents said when a mommy and daddy love each other really much, that's how babies are made, right? But how does a baby actually come from mommy and daddy loving each other so much? So after just, like, looking at each other and just, like, nodding, like, all right, it's time, straight up, right in front of our grandparents, we were just like, how are babies made? And my mom said, oh, you know, mommy and daddy love each other. And then we're just like, no, no. How are they really made? And all, of my, all I hear in the background is my grandmother going, oh, good lord. <laughs> she was not well, happy never... that we were having this conversation in front of her. Well, I never... Well, I mean, I... Oh, and my dad that actually... off better than the majority of Americans. My dad actually approached me and told me, told me about it and <laughs> was just like, hey, son. Look, you're going. You're going into fifth grade pretty soon. You should probably know about this. And then he just. I mean, when I it. was in fifth grade, <laughs> I was getting fucking laid all over the place, son. Uh, well, it was more of like I was homeschooled up until fifth grade, and I was going into the shit show that is the public school system in fifth grade. So, uh, my point is, American. My point is, they're typically in the U.S. All that, like, that shit tends to not go very well. Mm hmm. Uh, I mean, or... after all, American sex ad is basically just, hey, let's show them a whole bunch of pictures of just genitals with various diseases and tell them if they ever have sex, this is going to happen to them. Hmm. No, I need to practice safe sex. I mean, I'm still a fucking virgin, so what do I know? But still. Well, yeah, but it's not like the schools are ever going to teach you how to put a, like, tell you how to put a condom on or any of that shit for safe sex. Just like mm. how they don't teach us how to do taxes. <laughs> Something they really should. Probably. Anyways, this isn't about the fucking school system, all right? This isn't about the shit show that is the U.S. <laughs> yeah, I'd say the public school system and the government, but yeah. <laughs> That's what happens when you have traditionalism running the show. <laughs> Anyways, parentheses, Yvonne had been had seen articles that noted that some hot tramps who might be seen as her competition proclaimed their enjoyment of this of that particular pro proclivity. She shuddered at the thought, wondering idly if that meant that the next generation would be romanticizing the or romanticizing the ordinary housewife of yesterlore. She couldn't romanticize a woman who had thrived in the South by feeding their husbands high cholesterol foods and encouraging them to go hunting and fishing in all types of weather. The premature deaths may have produced pensions, life insurance, and financial security, but steel magnolias could only enjoy the second half of their life and then only when their affairs of the first half went unacknowledged. What the fuck? That shit just happened. <laughs> this lady's got some, like, really fucked up views. <laughs> of like, ugh. I don't know. It's okay to go fishing in the thunderstorm. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. Yeah, just just don't go fishing in a watermelon patch. I would. It's an old campfire. It's an old campfire song. We gather around the campfire to sing. <laughs> Let's see. C a m p i uh c a m p f i r e f i. Song. If you don't think that we can sing it faster, then you're wrong. <laughs> hmm. Anyway, Tom, your paragraph. No, if it's yours. Oh, it's my. Oh, shit, that's right. <laughs> Psych. Fuck. She drove through the exur ex urban. Fuck. Area that allowed Atlanta to describe itself as a metropolis. Even the names. Al... Uh, Alfarda... Alfarada... Alfaretta, Marietta. Indicated places where the man of the house kept the little woman. Well. 
It was as if the transition to soccer mom from ordinary housewife had never occurred. Metropolitan Atlanta was nothing uh, was more than was more an extended backwoods area than an accelerated city. Now that Turner had taken the cash and the suits in New York and destroyed much of the rest of the empire, Ivani wondered how the next generation would fare. Hmm. Not that she cared about the 20-somethings with tongue piercings. They were a large reason she found her greatest successes with the Levitra generation. She preferred men who no longer found drug-enhanced pleasures of the flesh more important than a woman who could keep them interested for the half hour or so before the drug was effective. Her men were those whose definition of foreplay largely consisted of being able to look fondly, share a glass of expensive wine, and listen nostalgically to doo-wop or other classic rock. Pleasant conversation and lubricated condoms did the rest. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, this fucking... This is a very jaded person. Mm-hmm, very much so. Who hurt you? Everyone, probably. <laughs> Uh, that, that makes sense. Oh, Everyone hell. hurts. Y'all are yep. f- fast at reading, aren't y'all? Yep. <laughs> Today, thinking of Rory, Yvonne pondered what to wear. She approached the well-monicured commerce with its delightful se- selection of stories. She even enjoyed watching those daddy's little cuties spend far too much at Petite Sophisticate and J. Crew on clothes that did far too little for them. Damn. Not, she reflected uncharitably, that they need their clothes to do as much for them as I do. Well, she also is a bit of an elitist. Although that and you also missed the T in that one. Yes, I did miss the T in that one. Mr. T? I mean, I would love to just meet Mr. T, but that's besides the point. I pity <laughs> God damn it. She imagined how she would approach Rory. She would shyly reach out. The model of a guine. God damn it. Fuck, I I have to Google the word. Yeah, I don't know what it is either. (laughs) An innocent or unsophisticated young woman. Hmm. Damn, they're throwing shade, aren't they? Ingenue. Not sure why anyone would want an ingenue. Why would would you want naive? Anyway. Which both of them would believe for the moment she was. She would seductively remove his glasses from his face. She would... would, Should she speak? What is the male equivalent of you're beautiful without your glasses? I'm pretty sure you're beautiful without your glasses. Works pretty well. No, just to act silently would be better. I mean, just to act silently would be better. Fuck, I can't read today. Eh. Well. It. Well, I would blame it on the weather, but... Eh. Well, whatever. I'm gonna read now. She would move simply. Gently touch him her fingers, hinting of nail. Caress that solid torso. Add a heartfelt coup about how strong he must be. To tilt her head slightly, hinting at supplication. He should see worship in her eyes. To slowly move her other hand to his Grecian formula temples, running the fingers more nail this time through it. To exalt how impressive it is that his hair is still intact while widening her grin to highlight her white striped teeth. Teeth. Should she show a hint of tongue? I... There's so much about this that just makes me feel so goddamn uncomfortable. More than anything else in this story so far. Yeah, no, it... Eh. Eh. I guess it's strategy. I, 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 <laughs> I think I think what made me cringe the hardest was the hint of worship in the eyes thing. That is nope. Mm. Nope. 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 Right. Zane, your line. Finally, right? Yep. Finally, there would be a slow, apparently natural, motion of the hands from hair to removing the glasses. Is he nearsighted? His age hinted not. He would still be able to see her. She decided to proceed directly to moving the glasses slowly down to her side and rub them with her blouse as if cleaning them thoroughly, forcing his eyes to travel down her body? (laughs) Maybe? (laughs) He's just like, fuck, my glasses! I can't see without my glasses! Without my glasses! (laughs) 
<laughs> He's just like looking around the room. Where the <laughs> fuck did you go? Give me my goddamn glasses back. He is effectively blind without the glasses. Like can't even see her silhouette or like a blur where she should be. It's just nope. Just like Yeah. <laughs> That'd be funny. Oh, just a poor guy. Anyways, where was I again? Oh yeah. Another, Another tap. tap of his fabulous torso, lingering this time with com comment about his not needing the vaseline and oils of a Stallone. Vaseline. Vaseline and oils of a Stallone. What? It doesn't make it less confusing, but... Frank, what are you doing here? <laughs> what? Frank hey. Stallone. Uh, oh. <laughs> so, hey, what you guys doing in here? Anyways. <laughs> she would note his lack of love handles while tilting her own torso to highlight her glorious 38 Ds. Did it misspell were... glorious? Oh, no. You just yeah. misspelled it in your head. I guess. <laughs> glorious 38 dicks. You know... They were impressive. <laughs> she knew every now... Even now when they were no longer supported by nature... Thank God for Howard Hughes, she mused. If he'd gone for those boy girls instead of Jane Russell, women's rights would have been set back 20 years! What the fuck does that mean? Um... Fuck knows. I... Um... What are you trying to apply here? I think she's implying that a woman's bus size is what determines how powerful she is and what her rights are. Well, that's very... Sadly, I've heard in some cases, that's not this. wrong. Oh, God. There's totally an anime about this. You can't convince me otherwise. Well, yes, of course there's an anime about that. Anytime you have an anime in which one character has tits bigger than another character, the one with the smaller tits won't stop incessantly complaining about the fact that they have smaller tits. No, I mean, literally, there's an anime about where how high you are in, the, in this, in, like... How like how high your status is is how big your boobs are. That's... <laughs> There's a legit oh, anime about that. Is it an anime or is it a hentai? It's an anime. It's like that. Like we're not fully hentai, but we're gonna show you boobies forever. So etchy. Yeah. Or like the far end of etchy. Yeah. Hmm. Oh God! I swear to God, Tom, are you looking this up? No, that's not me typing. <laughs> That's me! <laughs> so someone decided to make an anime based off the plot of some weird deviant art fetish point. Got ya. Um. Anyway. Uh, there are weirder ones. The Edo period of Japan gave rise to a clan of warriors with a very specialized magical oh, skill. Oh god damn the it! The clan no. was known as the Manu, oh. and the skill was oh. the ability to diminish a sword strike that could shrink the size of a woman's breast. Why? This might not seem like an ability that could exert power over a land, but in Manu Hekicho, large breadth denotes status, wealth, fame, and influence. Ah, <laughs> I wish I were dead. <laughs> so, situation normal. Ah. Uh. Ivani pulled into the Tangers Outlet Mall, reassuring herself that Rory would not track fashions intensely the way Richard does. She remembered the pivotal scene in some clothing movie where the blonde woman catches the man knowing fashion and realizes he's gay. She could not, for the hundredth time, consider Richard in those terms. Rejecting the possibility again for the hundredth time, she tried to concentrate on Rory Edwards. Hey, just because a guy knows about fashion doesn't mean he's gay. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> uh, I don't know about fashion, but that's not where I'm going. Yeah, Tom knows nothing about fashion. He's gay. I <laughs> uh, kind of walked into that one, didn't I? Hmm. All right. Anyway. <clears throat> she was distracted by the list of things she needed to buy, clear from her scenario. There would be a tasteful shade of red nail polish, lip gloss, hand cream, moisturizer, tooth polish, and a flavored mouthwash. For the latter, she contemplated mint, but had a breakthrough with the idea of cinnamon, something to surprise him. Oh boy, cinnamon, so surprising. She considered a touch of dye, not that I need it, but gloried once again in her glowing auburn tresses. Good her to know she's not conceited. Her mother claimed she had inherited them from her grandmother. She decided a green hair clip, which would also highlight her eyes, would be sufficient. But the most important part was the outfit. 
If she was going to berail me on his yacht. Okay, that made me uncomfortable. <laughs> no. Nice. Oh, that's the kind of light you would expect in a shit porno. <laughs> Probably want to be a rail meat on your yacht. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Just start saying that to people. <laughs> oh, jeez. Out of context, too. Like, I want to be rail meat on your yacht. I don't own a yacht. Exactly. <laughs> yacht's a metaphor. <laughs> the yacht's a metaphor for that dick. Jeez. Uh. <laughs> what is this? It's cock porn. I, shit, popcorn, dyslexia. <laughs> uh. Oh my. Talk about a Freudian slip. <laughs> well, I mean, you know what they say about Freudian slips is that it kind of it typically implies what you really want to say. Um, mm -hmm. Or what you really want in that moment, anyway. Mm -hmm. Good. I can understand wanting that. She would have to look the part, and nothing in her wardrobe was quite perfect yet. There was a purple silk blouse from she had... Yep, yep, you read it right. God damn it. From she had bought at Meme and Marcus, but she had worn it to a party of Callie's three years ago. She was afraid Rory had been there and would remember it. Jesus, from three years ago? I can't remember what happened yesterday. I've slept since then. <laughs> I'm sitting in here with, like, pants I've been wearing for so long that are way too big for me that there is a fucking hole where my heel digs into them. Do you really think I give a shit about what people are wearing? And I can't imagine anybody caring much more than what I do. So long as they're not wearing Crocs, I don't give a shit. <laughs> so that's why I piss you off. Yes. <laughs> That is the sole reason. <laughs> Your Crocs anger me. Please take them off now. <laughs> if you wish to continue our conversation, I require these Crocs off. Cross his legs. Crocs, white after Labor Day. What the fuck is wrong with you? What, what does it matter what I wear after Labor Day? You're not supposed to wear white after Labor Day. Why? Just like you don't match reds with greens unless it's Christmas. Okay. All right, I can bet. understand that. At Big Club, but... I'm all coming in red and green now. <laughs> oh, fuck you. <laughs> <sighs> uh, she couldn't remember him from that party, but had been there during her enchantment with Ka my cow. Fuck. And men claim only women are bewitching. That's wrong on a lot of levels. Yeah, I mean, I've seen some pretty goddamn bewitching men in my time. Oh my, how scantilous. She, skirt <laughs> she skirted past the Georgia Tech and UGA girls grabbing last year's halter tops and tube dresses for the coming summer. While she fancied that her body could still support a tube dress, she needed something more traditional for Rory. There is no point in emphasizing the difference in their ages, trivial though she thought of it. She knew this quest well, given her natural proclivity towards toward men who could legitimately be considered late middle-aged, old enough to know better but careful enough about their bodies to keep them in peak shape. This expedition required an outfit that would have been daring in his day, but would appear restrained among what currently passed for fashion, which meant a bright green dress, the hair clip would have, uh, would have to be purple, fishnet stockings, and most importantly, a good-fitting push-up bra. So, it was the bra shopping first. She wanted a nice lace, wondering if black would be too daring and rejecting red out of hand. Well, yeah, you got a green dress! Perhaps white would be safer, especially since the dress was likely to be a bit translucent. Selecting a bra, she thought, is one of those tests that makes women wish for a penis, flat chest, or both. The hours she wasted in just the past few years, not to mention all those she expected to waste over the next several decades, were frightening. Not even two bras of supposedly the same size would uh, and make would fit well, or often even similarly. And two different labels were a sure sign that a 38D would be a uh, 40E would be a 36C. Heaven help her when she realized that Calvin had been correct in saying that her left breast was smaller than her right. Bra shopping was like trying two pairs of shoes to make one pair. Still, whether it was li life with Rory or there was some Mr. Wright who followed him in her, her pantheon, this, this roundelay would not end. 
even while her plan was still hatching and the glories of an anticipated seduction could still be savored. Yavani suspected this would not be her last relationship. Exhausted before she began, she chewed the... La eggs? How... The what? L Le apostrophe eggs. eggs. <laughs> Legs. legs? Is it just legs? Just say legs. It's she easier. She issued the legs Haynes Bally Playtex store for Claire's. If I had searched for a Nubra, she knew that Playtex Nubra? would be the result of her searching for something to signal a long-term traditional woman. The temptation of going strapless and backless in the world of A-cups, Wonder Bra, and plastic surgery for 54-year-olds 50 was tempting, though. Nubra. What is a Nubra? Nubra! <laughs> I know, but still, it's Nubra. Just the context, it might be a, it might be a brand. It's a specific brand of bra. It's called Nubra. Nubra, not Nubra. I know, but still, Nubra. <laughs> That's what the word not looks Nubra. like. It's Nubra, it's, and I'm it's, calling it that forever. It's basically, it's one of those that it's just the cups. Like, there are no straps to it. It just, like, is supposed to... I'm thinking it's, like, a double-sided tape situation? Why do you know so much about women's clothing? I literally just looked it up right now. Nah, man, I bet you got some new bra in your room that you like to wear. Dude, I'm flat-chested. I don't need a bra. And if he did, that would be a problem? Well, I mean, I'm not you or Zane, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just ask I'm just asking Zane. I mean... Heck. What you do in your spare time, that's up to you, man. <laughs> Look, booty shorts are one thing. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. <sighs> the result she finally found was worth the effort. Black lace top, solid white cups, support, comfortable sweat-absorbing interior, and a silk lace... Ex uh, silk exterior. Where the fuck did I get lace from? For yeah. that first maneuver of his hand. Even that had... Uh, even that it had been made in China, where all of the women who worked on it were, uh, probably did not measure to her own endowment. Racist. Did not yeah. shop e stop Ivani from wondering at the marvels of modern American culture. Either that or she's just like, oh, I've got plastic surgery. They're bigger than normal uh, anyway. She has so. a 38D. Yes, that's bigger than normal. But at the same time, I'm pretty sure it's not impossible for some random Chinese factory worker to be bigger. Well, no, probably not. But she's just like saying. the lady there just to try on the bigger bras. <laughs> and all and she's like, thinking is, damn, these Americans are fucking fat if they need these this big. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh my gosh. Just the professional Chinese bra tester, man. They need one. Hmm. Mm. Oh, fuck. I did it again. God damn it. What? Took a joke too far, man. I ruined it. Yeah. Thanks, Obama. I could I could take it further, okay. but I'm not what? gonna go there. <laughs> Is this how you go further beyond? I, God I, damn it! <laughs> Are you go about beyond to become Super bra. Jokester Three. <laughs> <laughs> the bra found. She moved on to Elizabeth for dresses, glorying again that her flowing locks meant that she really had but two basic choices in color: green or purple. So bad. And the climate of Atlanta allowed either color to appear appropriate at least 10 months out of the year, setting yourself off against the verdant landscape and the glories of the sunset as, as if it were natural, instead of planned down to the hour. She thought ruefully of the fashion disaster that would have come from living in Chicago, where Calvin now cohabited with his not-even-a-handful trust fund bimbo. What the fuck, man? <laughs> she just shamed someone for having smaller tits than her. I, I mean, I knew... I know people are in this book are like there's no true good person and they're all terrible, but still. Ivani has been like the most frustrating character this entire time. Yeah. She has not had a single likable scene. Has anyone besides the police dude who we only had one chapter of and then we stopped liking him later in that same chapter? Isidore, for the most part, hasn't been unlikable. Aside yeah, from the true. adultery thing. And when that's the benchmark. <laughs> In a book like this, that's not saying much. Because, but also, I'm like still the most likable person here ended up, uh, ended up being a home wrecker. And he can see ghosts. <laughs> There's also that. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, oh, I can see ghosts. <laughs> There's a ghost in your house. Oh, fucking... I don't even know. I can't think of anything funny to say. I'm fucking losing it, man. <laughs> it's Saturday. Game night. over, man. Up. Game over. I could yeah. see all the people clicking off this video right now. All one of them. <laughs> <laughs> you think they didn't already click off before now? Uh, hey. Well, anyway. There's jokes about our skill levels behind. I mean, uh, she considered... No, is that right where I am? Yep, yeah, she, she considered... considered. She considered the timing of her impending liaison, lazy, lazy, and decided liaison, liaison, and just liaison, and decided she should take a lavender sunset approach to the evening. A 7:30 meeting could be leveraged to its fullest. His view, as she approached the outdoor table, fashionably late, would be of herself, set off by the glowing yellow red bat drop and highlighted by the verdant city of the surrounding del deciduous trees. I could just Burning picture her scene. getting there, and he's gone. He's like, I'm sorry, you're late. I left. They kicked me <laughs> off the table because you took so damn long. You took too long. What were you doing? Buying an outfit. Buying an outfit! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> she decided this meant that her hair would have to be down and around her shoulders. Maybe a flower, lilac, daisy, instead of a hair clip. It would appear positively antebellum, with a hint of knowing contour, uh, couture, couture. Fuck. A lavender Donna Karen with a neckline that did not plunge so much as gracefully hint. Well, it might, may have been intended to gracefully hint, but her pulchritude, 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 pulchritude always more. Guessed. Always more favored grace than hinting, tapered at the waist to highlight the firms of her hips and derriere, ending slightly below the knee to show, show her calves off in, in good stead while hiding the scars from the skiing accident that had caused her to meet Calvin at the lodge and veil. Selected, Yvonne left the store, wet with both the success of the expedition and the anticipation of the night to come. Oh, wait, what? Yep, yep, there's audio of me saying that now. Why do I always get those lines? <laughs> I I guess she's just really excited for the night. I mean, good for her, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to be that excited beforehand. <sighs> eh, whatever. I haven't even had dinner yet. Oh my. Chapter 17. Chapter 17. Andrew Venice parked his car on the street in front of the house and double-checked the address he had written down on a slip of paper. Yeah. This was the place, all right. It was an ordinary house, on an ordinary street. There was nothing special about it, just plain. Nothing here looked like night light. It. Nothing here looked like it might be connected to murder or assault or anything like that. Richard Isaac, the man he'd come to interview, was a stock manipulator, and you'd think he'd lift his. <laughs> okay, I put emphasis on the wrong things there, didn't I? No, no, no. I just realized something. Keep going. A stock manipulator, and you'd think he'd live in a fancier place, a nicer house, on a better street. But since he was also a police informant, maybe he wanted to keep a low profile, not do anything to stand out. Not exactly like the witness protection program, but not at all that different. Or maybe he he just wasn't that good at manipulating stocks. Finnis would try to find out, in addition to finding out what he really came here to ask about. Is this the repeat? What? Is this the repeat chapter? Like, not the same number chapter, but is this, like, one that was written at the same time? Because this is Andrew Venice, the police inspector. I have no idea what you're talking about. She put the note on the front... He put the note on the front seat and his glasses in the glove compartment, checking his reflection in the rearview mirror and smoothing back his hair. Turning 40 was hard. He didn't know what he'd been planning on uh, planning to do at 40, but he was damn... Uh, but he was damn sure this wasn't it. No, oh, well, it was his job, and he was the one to do it. He'd better get going, answer his, ask his questions, make his report. Then he'd have to stop by the gym later, work out a bit, fight off the ravages of time. He was still in his prime, even if he had to do uh, had to work harder to maintain it. I'm like, yeah, we did this like <laughs> first or second time through. I fucking swear it. I'm it's, like 75 percent sure we've read this before. <laughs> it just it is a word in. for word copy for cha of chapter four. Oh, yay, cool. So we get to continue on this. I was really hoping that you guys wouldn't notice. Nope, I noticed. Yeah. Because it would be really hilarious just, like, both of you reading this, and it's like, oh, by the way, if this sounds familiar, like, after it got finished. 
Yeah. By the way, all of you read this, you fucking idiots. Ha! I was gonna have. I was gonna give the chap of the episode name a specific, uh, specific title due to that. Yeah. Well. So you want to just skip this chapter? Nah, I'm gonna keep reading. All right. <laughs> Getting out, getting out of the car, he looked both ways, then shut the door and used the key fob to lock all the doors. It wasn't a bad neighborhood or anything like that, but he still didn't want to take any chances. Smart man. He let a minivan go past, then an SUV, then he walked around the front of his car and up the long sidewalk up to the porch. A bench sat on the porch, the kind you might sit on and drink some lemonade, but it didn't look used, like nobody had had any lemonade to drink there for a while, or maybe they just didn't like the porch or something. Isaac's, pro Isaac's probably had to keep a low profile anyway. He wasn't the kind of guy who spent a lot of time outside making friends with the neighbors. Yeah, fuck this guy. He's an asshole. <laughs> Finnis went to knock on the door and stopped. There was a flyer lying on the welcome mat. No, it was one of those bags of advertisements they paid neighborhood kids to deliver. One of those circulars. <clears throat> Sorry, ads make me sick. Anyways, there's a cardboard yeah. box full of them. Just... Have I mentioned that our sponsor this episode is? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you think we have sponsors. Uh, box full of them just off to the side of the door. He picked up the new one and held it in his hand. It was for a hentai body pillow. <laughs> As he knocked on the door with his knuckles, loud enough so that anyone's psyched to hear him, but not pounding or anything like that, watching his reflection in the storm door, smoothing the labels on his suit jacket so he'd be sure to look nice. The door opened. Commission, the nation, gone running again. <coughs> Just imagine like a smooth like saxophone solo playing while this is re um, while this is reading out. Just because it's like one of those old like terrible um, uh, noir movies. Deja vu, I just been in this place before, higher on the street, and I know it's my time to go. Mm hmm. Calling you and the searches of mystery standing on my feet. It's so hard when I try to me be. Oh, fuck! Are you done? <laughs> fuck I you! I just it's got a good chocolate. <laughs> Wait, what? I just got chocolate. Awesome. Thanks. Richard Isaacs was the man who answered the door. He looked over Venice, wondering who this guy was at his door and why he was blasting initial D for some reason, <laughs> and what he was doing there. Venice got into his pocket and pulled out his wallet, flipped it open to show his bat, the uh, show hid badge. Hi, I'm Connor, the android sent by Cyberlife. <laughs> Hi, my name is Andrew Venice, he said cheerfully, like there was nothing unusual about him showing up there in the middle of the day. I'm here to ask you a few questions. It's no big deal. But it was a big deal. <laughs> that was just what Venice wanted him to think, Isaacs thought. They always said it was no big deal when they were trying to nail you. Uh. Mm. He just runs a gay bar in like the back of his house. Weird mm. place to run one. Ooh. Or should I say, <laughs> I, ooh, what's this? Oh, whoa. I noticed your bulge there. Oh, whoa, really what's nice. this? I found this lying outside your door, I, Andrew said. You want it? What was this guy trying to do, being friendly to him? No, just toss it there into the circular file, Isaacs pointed. Toss it into where? Fuck me that delay. That box right there beside the door, he said, pointed to the box. He was getting mad. It's not a circle, it's more of a square, said Venice. Or a rectangle. <laughs> I fucking maybe. remember this. Sorry. <laughs> just the fucking... <laughs> This, this fucking is why we bullshit like... troll. This is why we liked Andrew Venice, and then he turned out to be a horrible person as well. Yes. Uh, it's, it's, it's a joke, alright? No, Isaacs was really, really mad. I put the circulars in the fucking circular file. But that crazy Venice guy just offered you again. You sure you don't want it? They got good deals inside. You can, save, uh, can save you some money. <laughs> uh, yeah, just throw it away. I wish the kids would stop delivering them. I don't know what I was trying to do there. I have no idea. I don't either. It makes two of us. Just the two of us. We can make it if we try. Just the two of us. You and I. Are you done? I'm still waiting on Zane. <laughs> what? It's your line, Zane. 
I put, I said, what the, whoa. Yep, yep. Hey, hey listen. listen. Yep. Hey, listen, said, <laughs> hey, listen, said Venice, sticking his hands into his pocket. I don't have all day here. I'm on an investigation. I came here to ask you some important questions, and I want answers. <sighs> the fuck was that voice? I want answers. I, I don't need answers, like, right now. I don't have to answer anything you ask, Richard Isaacs replied forcefully. He wanted to make a point. Are you going to stay out there on the porch and scare off all the neighbors, or are you going to come inside? I'll come inside and ask you my questions there. I want to ask you about Margaret Eastman. Then he pulled him inside and shot him. Isaacs knew he was going to be regretting this later, but he said, come on inside, anyway, even though he didn't want this guy inside. <sighs> Fuck. Okay. You okay there? No, I, 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 hello? God, is that you? Am I dead? <laughs> what no, is going on? What going to do? That's what you're... they expected from you once you got messed up with the police, but he didn't have to play their game. <laughs> what is going on? Fuck if I know, man. You're confusing me more than the story, and that's saying something. God, are you there? It's Tom. <laughs> Venice walked... Sorry, I'm not there. Venice walked oh, into the living room, not sure what to expect. Something about Isaacs didn't add up right. Either he was living in a plain house in this plain neighborhood because of frugality, because he was cheap, yes, that's what frugality means, or there was some other reason. He couldn't figure Isaacs out, like there was something he was hiding. Even though Venice... Uh, knew he was in his mid-60s. Uh, he looked more like a tough guy than a stock market expert. He had broad shoulders, a narrow waist, muscular. His cheeks Huge were ruddy thing. like he spent a lot of time outside in the sun in the wind. Damn genetics. Some people didn't have to work for anything and had it all anyway. He didn't look like a guy who just turned 40 and needed by Agra to get it up anymore. But Venice wasn't here to feel sorry about himself. You sure about that? He had a job to do, and it was time to do it. Isaac sat down in the brown reclining chair with a plop in front of the big screen TV, and he pointed to the couch. Why don't you sit down, he suggested, like a man who meant it? Question mark. Like a man who meant it? Nani? Venice wasn't going to let himself be pushed around that way by some informant. I think I'll stand. This will only take a few minutes. So get started already. Isaacs would be glad when this ends was over so he could watch his football game. You follow the Falcons at all? I'm not really a football fan, said Venice, although he split a pair of season tickets with his brother-in-law and went to half the games. <clears throat> I thought there was more to that sentence. He looked at the TV for a second, trying to spot Bill in the crowd. Bill was married to his little sister, Leslie. He adored Leslie. Bill was a great guy, just the kind of guy he'd rather be spending the afternoon with. Then he thought he sounded like some was for saying that, so he added, I think the West Coast offense really ought to open things up for Vic, though. They should make the playoffs next year. Yeah. Said Isaacs passionately. He loved football. He didn't mind all the damn questions now so much. And off this Vince character like the Falcons. So you want to ask me about somebody? Some Mary? Molly? Her name is Margaret Eastman. His vein, uh, Venice said. His veins turned to ice at the mention of, his, of her name. Things like that shouldn't happen to a young woman like her. Who is she? Isaacs asked. Zane. Yeah, who is she? The door to the kitchen slammed open and in walked the most beautiful woman Vince had seen today or maybe in a week. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking asshole. The more he looked at her, <laughs> more he thought maybe in a lifetime, but he didn't have a whole lifetime of experience yet. But she was incredibly beautiful. Her eyes burst with curiosity, or maybe it was jealousy. She was older for a beautiful woman, maybe 40, maybe the exact same age as Vince. She was wearing a bra under her tie plus, and she was wearing lipstick too, and he couldn't help staring at her. Her hair was pretty too, like it was made out of silk. Just that kind of shiny. Shiny. Pretty. Hair shiny. Tell me about the rabbits, George. <laughs> and he get and Lenny gets shot in the end. 
Yes, everyone knows this. I know. It's still I a don't... fucked up book. <laughs> well, you see, the puppy was making a move like it was gonna bite me, so I smacked it on the nose and stopped moving. Hey, Monica, we need some privacy to discuss business, says Isaacs. It's just man talk. Nothing you'd be interested, you know, because you have a vagina. <laughs> If it's another woman again, you bet I'm interested, she said, adjusting her breasts to make them stick out more. Venice was still staring at her. He couldn't take his eyes off her, and she was looking at his eyes, like she was touching herself for him, to be prettier for him. He couldn't believe it. Yeah, especially because this man's like, or this girl's married. Uh, hello? In a relationship. It's probably best not to be staring. Yeah. Some people, man. Waiting! Fuck. Okay, where are we again? I don't, I don't even know. know. I don't know who she is. That's where it starts. I don't know who she is, Isaac said. <laughs> he was regretting inviting Vince into the house again for, you know, staring at his wife. I'll make him an offer. He can't refuse. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you don't know about anything about her? Vanessa asked. Monica stared at him with her lips, making a little red pout. If I knew anything about her, you can bet I'd let you know, she said, slapping Isaacs on the top of his head. Ow, he said, grabbing the top of his head. He looked at Venice again and said, I said I don't know about, I know her or anything about her. She was the... What? I... What? Okay, it didn't happen. Okay. All right. She was the nurse at the hospital where Bruce Luce recovered from his automobile accident, Venice said. She's really beautiful, like you wouldn't believe. She has brown hair. <laughs> Pretty hair. Unbelievable. I know you like women with brown hair, you two-timing jerk. <laughs> Monica said she was hitting Isaac on the top of the head again, and he jumped up and yelled. I think this is abuse. No, no, it's comical. Uh, no, pretty sure it's just abuse. I mean, yeah, I was, I was being sarcastic. Like calling the honeymooners so comical. Yeah, I know. I was being sarcastic. Please, we all know that women can't abuse men. Huh, huh. Ugh. I don't know. I think some of the bullet holes in my body might disagree. Stop that. I said I don't know anything, and I don't know her. Stop. Leaving. I could show you pictures, Venice said. He had a lot of pictures of her, but he didn't want to share all of them. Not with this scum. It Those might help your memory. to masturbate too. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Listen, buddies. Isaac said, "You came here, so take what you get and leave." I said, "I don't know anything. I don't know anything. That's all there is to it." You try to do like a low rent Jack Nicholson? No, Honey, darling, love of my life. Give I don't know that. who Jack Middleson is. Nicholson! Not Middleson. He played the second best Joker in, like, the original Tim Burton Batman movies. Nope, doesn't ring a bell. He was also the killer in The Shining. Here's Johnny. Nope, nope never seen Here's that movie. Johnny! I never saw that movie. Well, I haven't either, but I know who he is. Low class. I am a low-class warrior. Uh, more middle-class, I think. I have a gun, though. That puts usually evens out the field. Hmm. Come at me so with all you want with your sword. Trash. <laughs> <sighs> don't... Uh, why don't you take... Uh, why don't you take me? Monica purred at him. Hey, now, I don't like that, Isaac said, and You're now you... star Get your game on. Let's play. I, I don't like that, Isaac gold. said. <laughs> and now he was mad at all of them for ruining his day. He was mad enough to hurt somebody. He'd killed a man before one time with his bare hands, and he could do it again if he put something in his bare hands, like a knife or a gun, <laughs> or something that he could kill somebody with. I just need something on bare hands so I can kill it with my bare hands. I killed a man with this thumb. <clears throat> Fuck, okay. It's my turn, right? Or... Yep. Yes! 
Venice sent trouble ahead, but he wanted to see more of Monica. Just Monica. <laughs> he had oh, the Venice. sense, though, that they were just ships passing in the night. That she was just some temporary liation. Liation? Liation of Richard Liais- Liaison. Now, that's we totally an went I. over this word. <laughs> that's totally an I, though. Liaison. That's, that's an I, I though. It's oh, a French they word. Yeah, fuck you. I know what I'm talking it's about. Liaison. It's not. It's part of the English lexicon. Shh. You've it never heard garage, like any show true. like they use the phrase a police liaison or whatever for like some guy who's not police but is helping inform the police and shit. I don't really watch Buddy Cop. Thanks. Not Buddy Cop. This is police <laughs> procedural. God. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I lost my place, god damn it. Probably <laughs> because you can't say a word you've already had to say before we told you how to say it. But this isn't the word, they misspelled it. <laughs> well, the first syllable would still be pronounced the same. No, because, like, if he li- who cares? A- Shut up! <laughs> Let's just finish. Let me finish it then. <laughs> <laughs> Probably just another cheap trap or something like that. All the others, maybe she could be dig three, but it wasn't going to be in this lifetime. Not with him. I swear you said cheap trap. God damn it, man. <laughs> maybe I did. Maybe a I'm cheap in the trap. trap. Oh god, she has a dick. Hmm. Uh well, well, if you don't know anything, I guess I'll be going, he said. Walking down the sidewalk, the car waited for him at the curb. He stopped before opening the door and looked back at the ho- back up at the house. He saw Isaac standing in the window frame looking back at him. Somebody was hiding something here, but Venice knew he was a bulldog. He didn't get to the bottom of it yet. All right, let's see. And it didn't matter who got her along the way, because he was going to find out the answers. So dun, like, dun, dun. What porn game are you playing right now? I'm not playing a porn game. I'm playing f- Food Fantasy. The hell is that? Porn game. <laughs> it's not. It's a food game. I've seen Food Wars. There's food porn out there. I said Food Fantasy, yeah. though, mate. <sighs> Anyway, that's it for today. That's all, folks. This absolute shit show. That's all, folks. Y'all done? Never. Nope. It's never ogre. Until it's ogre. It's all ogre now. <laughs> he oh fills my. my bottom with his love. <laughs> oh, jeez. I wish he'd fill mine with love. Night, everybody. <laughs>